All right, Martin Scorsese's films with three different types of films and genres. Originally, all of these were gonna be one video each for each movie, but I figured, you know what? The first two movies, I'm not gonna have much to say about, but Cape Fear, that's a good ass movie. So New York Stories, this is a anthology movie and Scorsese directs the first one, which in itself is kind of weird. It's about an artist and how he wants to stay in touch with his ex. And I guess it's implied that the reason why he wants her and she kind of resents him is that he kind of uses her kind of like baggage treats her kind of not well every time he goes upstairs and looks at her he wants to kiss her feet for some reason and his excuse is like oh no you know what i've just been you know tired painting a lot what is this throughout the movie you just see him constantly treat her like garbage and the reason she even got with him was because of art and painting and whatnot she wanted to be a part of that and every time they go to like a art gallery he always pushes her aside being like hey you know what i don't want you talking to that person that person he also seems very jealous and so that's what this whole section is about and i just was kind of checked out and then he allows her to sleep with that one dude at that art gallery and it's like okay this is a odd and very not healthy type of relationship they should probably split and then this girl stays in for a bit longer so that she can you know express her creativity but then there's a breaking point she just leaves so i guess in a way like this is a story about artists i think or maybe not artists but people that are creative in the many ways that some of them will treat others for their own personal gain and their own hypocrisy because he didn't really care about this girl but then he was always jealous but i don't know i just did not get anything out of this movie and then then the cycle starts again where there's a young impressionable girl that's like a big fan of his and he's like you know what i need an assistant and it'll probably be the same with that other girl that I just left at first treat her very nicely but then eventually he's like yeah you know what you were just here i wanted to use you essentially but it was all right and then oh yeah i almost forgot the other two stories kind of don't care for i don't remember the third one but the second one just kind of glossing over it it's about i guess divorce and how children will want to react to that because this girl wants to talk to her mother and father and she doesn't really yet understand and why they're divorced or why they're apart and whatnot thought it was all right as well the third one i forgot about whole movie's okay Kudin is a movie that is well made. It is well shot, well directed, well acted. Everything from the technical and on screen stuff, all that's really well done. And then that's kind of where it ends for me, where all that's great, but I don't care for what's happening on screen about this boy, how he's just a very normal, ordinary boy. And then through chants and prayers or whatnot, they see this boy as someone who could become a leader and then eventually lead him to politics, him getting assassinated or almost killed by assassins and whatnot because China wants him gone, I think. I think it's china i think and i'm just sitting here being like yeah this is again all good i don't know if i like what's going on on screen the story and everything kind of don't really care to be honest i would never ever watch this movie ever again it's not a bad movie i'm not saying that it's a bad movie it's just not for me i thought it was okay seeing a young boy being a young boy and then being this chosen like leader prophecy whatever thing and becoming this political leader and then the movie ends with him off his home and then i think tex appears saying that he has yet to return home he's still getting there but yeah yeah, I don't know. I don't have much to say about this movie. It's another one of those. It's well done, well made, but I don't care for it. And then we're ending it with Cape Fear, which I think is my favorite film from Scorsese. And it just so happens to have, once again, Robert De Niro, because he's great in this movie. He plays an ex-convict or someone just got out of prison who wants his revenge against his defense lawyer, I think. And so just that first scene of him getting out and then going to the theaters and then laughing his ass off, smoking right in front of that guy and that lawyer was hilarious. De Niro was great. And secondly, this could actually happen you have some person that's like an asshole who just wants to be really annoying smoke in a theater and start laughing hysterically just out of nowhere doesn't matter what movie just keep on laughing and so that starts the nightmare for this family whose name i forgot about but that doesn't matter de niro's a star first the daughter he decides to lie to her come to the theater room and then proceeds to you know touch her crush her face i think they kiss clearly underage it's gross messing with her head and then later on when she's talking to her father she says that you know what i don't mind him i liked it and he didn't come on to me it's like no this is no this is not good but it's his doing putting that shit in her head and then the mom she's not buying any of this shit just kind of rolling up with this car in front of the yard being like hey here's your mail whatever found your dog leash she wants none of his shit he's just there laughing thinking of ways of i don't know to do something and then he taunts the cop guy there's like a former cop that i think arrested him and he's like hey what up i can do whatever i want because he's finding loopholes around this i want my revenge he's been reading books and whatnot i've been thinking about this for a long ass time and 
he now knows kind of the law and kind of the loopholes around on not how to get caught and just not get in trouble with the law anymore and then also that scene of i guess the home alone scene where the families inside their house they're setting up traps for de niro closing all those window panels just closing closing and closing i don't know why but that moment of him closing all those windows i'm gonna remember for a long time because i don't know why it just looks iconic i think i saw it from somewhere and so when i saw that i'm like i think i saw that from somewhere i don't know if it's another film that i saw and that film had this film in it or a youtube video but i will remember that just slamming those windows so now de niro has the whole family on this boat he's not gonna leave them alone especially the lawyer because he wants him to feel lost de niro lost 14 years of his life he lost his freedom and he wants this guy to lose the same thing and he does despite winning in the end and killing off de niro the effect that he had on this family is already there this family now knows what it's like they've lost something i guess innocence just having to go through this being stuck by this guy is super traumatizing and it's something that you just don't get over it's something that you gotta think about for years and years and just that lawyer guy he killed him blood is on his hands and had to wash it off it was for defense obviously but they'll kill the guy didn't want to do that the daughter almost got tricked into thinking that she actually liked him and so just stuff like that where it's like this will affect this whole entire family for years and years until the rest of their life and that was it for scorsese's anthology thriller and what's the middle one biography film two of these i didn't really care for obviously but cape fear i wonder what movie's gonna top this because this is easily my number one movie i don't know but it's up there it's pretty damn good so that is it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching Thank you.